I do think we'll bring all this under control. And I, th I think the kind of like the, a very good sign that we are is, is that we're all worried about this now. And we're all thinking about it and we're all talking about it. You know, this is no longer a creature of the valley. It's, and there's a kind of idea which we've been grappling with and trying to confront for years now, information warfare, mm -hmm. which I think sits right at the heart of a lot of the kind of very big changes we're seeing around geopolitics and around how states and other big powerful political actors actually extend and use influence. Um, the idea in and of itself is, is both kind of simple and, and, and extremely malleable. And it basically sees information as a, a theatre of war. Mm. So not a tool of war, but a space that war happens within. And you see militaries talk about information dominance and manoeuvre and mimetic weaponry, but, but basically seeing information as, as a metaphorical battleground, just like air, sea, land and space. Mm. I think as information has become more and more central to our understanding of the world and to how we see societies to operate and what we think is important and where we think value is generated, um, I think um, information in equal measure has become more central to how we see conflict happening. I mean, I think seeing it as a space mm. like land, something that's equally as important for you to have to compete in, I think that's a fairly new idea. And there, just to let, let me link this now to ChatGPT and generative AI. Um, one of the things that we're all very nervous about, something that we all share, which is actually what's, you know, if you put yourself in the shoes of a, of a, of a bad actor, a propagandist for russia or china or iran or maybe liberal democratic states i'm sure as well in one way or another um can you imagine what you could do to a watching public if you set up generative ai to run ten thousand in parallel conversations with people and start to build friendships you start to move the idea of what propaganda looks like into a completely different realm and we know that people are influenced through friendships far more than they are getting spammed some random piece of disinfo whirling around online. And there's no way we can detect this. Like the, 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 the scale detection of generative AI is nowhere. And, and we know now that we're not going to win that, that arms race. So Facebook, Twitter, Google, they are probably not going to build ways of reliably spotting this stuff and taking it off before it reaches our eyeballs. So I that, mean, that's that, quite frightening. Sorry, I know it's not... Uh, <laughs> confluxes of power and, and big data and technology don't tend to be the happiest places for us to live in. Uh, yeah. And, and that, this, is a, this is a pretty grim one. I do, I, I am optimistic. I, I do think we'll bring all this under control. And I, I think the kind of like, the, a very good sign that we are is, is that we're all worried about this now. And we're all thinking about it and we're all talking about it. You know, this is no longer a creature of the valley. It's no longer, uh, you know, and, and permissionless innovation will, will collide uh, with the things that we've kind of created as human beings, I think, to always civilize power. So, yeah. it, I mean, to, to go to, a, 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 you know, basically to save anyone having to ever read my book, here's the, here's the conclusion, which is that kind of technology has made power wild. Like whether you look at it through all the examples I've just given, information warfare, um, campaigning outside of campaign law, companies outside of monopoly legislation, uh, warfare outside of the rules of war you can look almost anywhere and it's kind of broken out of the the kind of bars that we've always tried to cage power in we've always tried to say power is something which you can use in certain ways and not in others to restrict abuses yeah. now the bars of that cage can be lots of things it can be of course the law itself norms understandings ethical frameworks it can be you know, it can be professional societies, it can be chartered institutes, there's all kinds of ways in which we try and control power, you know, and we're now at a stage, I think, a kind of turning point where we are beginning to claw this wild form of power back into, well, really to build new cages for it, you know, and I, I think the kind of next decade, we, we will have to see like serious institutional reform, we're going to have to see a royal chartered for algorithmists, you know, uh, Chartered Institute for Algorithmists um, emerged, we're going to have to see new laws, and we are seeing new laws, we're going to have to see new norms, we have to see ideas of digital citizenship, and ideas of algorithmic privacy, you know, these new concepts will emerge. Mm -hmm. But, you know, I, I was in Antwerp, just until today, and across the square from me was a Gutenberg press. You know, we, we've seen large seismic changes in our information environment before, 
and and they cause pain and they cause wars uh, and they cause lots of abuse uh, and grief but but they are things that that we as a civilization do control uh, ultimately and do and do bring under um uh, some kind of more civilized and more humanizing frameworks eventually and i think to us now you know the the next decade are going to be how do we make all the squishy human stuff you know as exciting and as sexy and as fast moving as as the technology itself i mean the 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 law making i mean the the, the boring the, admin the, stuff the, the, the ethical <laughs> frameworks everything uh -huh. you know everything to, the, the the new bars of the cage how do we make all that um uh, stuff which um you know we have as as much talent as as much new ideas and as much innovation and drive and energy going into you know mm. as people building chat gpt8 yeah